to the All Brands Show. I'm your host, Barbara Douthat, and today we're going to be talking about the scan and cut cutting fabric and then sewing it out on your embroidery machine. We're really excited to have Courtney Douthat as a guest on the show today. She's my sister-in-law. We're a family-owned and operated business since 1976, and we're the second generation. Uh, and it's just wonderful to be with all of you. So before we bring Courtney in, we do have two giveaways that we're going to do. So the first one is going to be our $25 allbrands.com e-gift card. So be sure to comment hashtag allbrands to be eligible to win. Good luck. And the second is the Designs and Machine Embroidery Big Mega Giveaway. Now this one, we're going to put a link in the comments section. Um, so go get that link and um, fill it out so that you can be eligible to win. Um, and the winner will be announced August 4th. So yeah, I'm so excited, yay. Okay, and let's bring in the wonderful Courtney Douthat. Hey! Hi. Hey! I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. <sighs> So what are we going to do today? Well, I feel like a lot of times people uh, get nervous about cutting fabric in their machines, but cutting fabric on your scan and cut is so easy. And then when you bump it up a notch and cut out an applique, so no more applique scissors, and then you bump it up even further and actually stitch it out on your machine. And I feel like a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, here's the cutting part. Oh, here's the sewing part, but we're going to do all of it today. So you see, start to finish, this is how you do it. And these videos are saved. Barbara's awesome, and she does save them uh, to our YouTube channel, so that way, if you ever are doing your applique, you can do it with us. It's kind of like a sew along. Yay! Yay! I'm so excited. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We got so many people chiming in. So um, I'll be collecting uh, questions when Courtney's demonstrating, and she'll be collecting questions when I demonstrate. So we're going to be doing a applique golf towel today. These are uh, West Hodge towels and you can purchase them in any one of our seven retail store locations. Um, and we'll be using the Scan and Cut and the Brother Six Needle. So tell us a little bit more about cutting on the Scan and Cut fabric. Cool. All righty. So the, the easiest thing you need to know, now this particular model that's next to me is the SDX 325. Um, and I really like that because you can do up to a three millimeter thickness. So think like a puffy foam, a uh, thick cork fabric, leather, anything that is a fabric, you can do it easily on the machine. Now, usually with your appliques, you're doing cotton fabric. But if you did want to do an applique with different kinds of material and really mix and match and have fun with it, you could. So let's go over what we need. So I actually have my design right here on my USB. You can import a USB. You could do a design from the machine or you could... Um, bring something in wirelessly. So it's whatever you want. Since she is a brother machine, she will read a PES. PES, Courtney, that sounds familiar. Yes. So brother's uh, embroidery format is PES. So she will automatically read the PES and turn it into a cut file for us. So you don't have to have a cut file to do this. Some companies, I think um, Embroidery Garden, Kimberbell, they'll give you a cut file. But if they don't, well, what are you going to do? Well, I'll show you how to do that. So we'll have our design. We also have our blade. The blade I'm going to use today is my tan blade. So this is my fabric blade. I'm going to use this one. You could use your rotary if you wanted to, but she does the job just fine. My rotary I usually use with trickier fabric, um, but today I'm going to use my tan blade. Now, tan what mat, mat should we use? You heard how country came out? Mat. <laughs> I'm going to use my fabric uh, mat over here. And if you notice tan, tan. Brother got smart and they color coded for us. And I appreciate that. So I'm going to use my tan fabric mat and I'm going to use my tan blade. Now, let's see. I hit it behind me. So I have my fabric right here. Now, if you notice, I've already treated my fabric. Why? Well, it's an applique. I know it's going to be an applique. I know that I'm going to want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut both of them at once instead of having to go back and do it in segments. So I've already got my fabric treated. Now, am I going to take this paper back? And because this is a heat and bond light, am I going to take this and put it to my fabric mat? Absolutely not. Why? Because we're going to be pulling off paper until we're blue in the face. So I want to do fabric side down on my fabric mat. Now, why would I not want to do it on a standard mat or my low tech mat? Well, fabric 
I want to make sure this is on my stickiest mat, which my fabric mat is my stickiest mat. So fabric side down, it's going to give me that good grip. If I was to do it my uh, paper side of the Seat and Bond Light to a paper mat, like my low tack mat, well, it might hold, it might do okay, but it might slip. So I want to make sure my fabric's okay. I care more about my fabric than this paper backing that we're going to take off later anyways. It's already treated, so it's on there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. The machine doesn't know what it's cutting. It knows, do you want me to go through all of this? Or do you want me to do a half cut, which is like a kiss cut halfway? Well, I want to go through both this heat and bond light and this fabric. So I'm going to put that side down, go all the way through. So let's go ahead and we'll take our USB and put it into our machine. It's the lowest USB port right on the side. Let me switch cameras so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So I'm going to insert my USB. Okay, so we're going to come to our machine. We're going to come to retrieve data. And where do we want to retrieve it from? Well, we've got our machine, our USB from Canvas. Um, we could do it wirelessly. My computer is not here, so I can't do that. So I'm going to come from my USB. Alrighty. Now we'll open our pocket up. And then here's all the different letters. Now me and Barbara talked earlier and we decided to do the letter J because our owner's name is John Dowden and we're going to kiss up a little bit. So let's go to the bottom. All right. And here's our J right here. So we're going to grab that one. Now it's, it's sending it right here. Now, if I had a cut file for this applique, if I was to click this shield right here, well, that shield would then give me the cut file for this, but I don't. So I need to make this out of thin air. So I'm going to come here to the little flower. Now this is telling me, hey, this is what the design currently is sized. I always recommend going up one, just one bump it up once. So that way I know that it's going to catch when it's doing my satin stitch around. So we're going to hit OK. Now, if you notice the three right here, this right here is giving me the outside and the inside of that J. This is just giving me the outside of that. And this is, there we go, went over too far. This is giving me the stitches. Well, I don't want the stitches and I don't want the inside and outside. I want an applique. So I'm going to select this center one and hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and set. Alrighty, now, since I am flipping my material, I need to flip my design. Now, there's tons of different editing functions on here, but to hit edit, object edit, and then right here is your flip. So I'm going to flip my design. Now, I could resize, I could add multiple, I could rotate it, I could do any number of things, add a seam allowance to it, I could do so many different things to it, but this is all I want to do for this. So I'm going to hit OK. Okay, again, and now I'm going to wait because I'm going to get my mat ready because I want to scan in. And if I'm going too fast, someone yell stop. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're going to take the clear protective thing off of our mat. I had a, uh, someone email me the other day and say their mat was completely not sticky. They had the clear protective sheet still on it. So we've got our fabric. It's treated, untreated side. Well, technically it's all treated. And I'm just going to throw it willy nilly on my mat. Nothing special about it. This is hey, a favorite. Courtney, we did get a question. What are you treating your fabric with? Heat and bond light. Um, I use hot fix. I've used a wonder under heat and bond. Light. I've used tons of different things. I don't have a strong favorite, but probably hot fix. It's probably my favorite. Um, so it's treated on there just willy nilly. You don't have to treat your fabric to cut it. This one I knew was going to be an applique. So I was like, well, why not? So we've got it on there. Now, usually if it's a mat that's getting dirty over time, I would say get your brayer tool and bray it on there. This is a pretty new mat, so it, it's on there. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and we're going to take our mat and we're going to load it into our machine. When you're loading your mat, what you're going to do, I don't know if I'm zoomed in too much, you're going to hold the bottom of it or the side of it, just kind of loosely put it in there where it's touching and then hit your load button. You're not going to shove it in there. You're not going to push it in any kind of form. Once it catches on, it goes through and it's good to go. I have a lot of people that do it up here and stuff like that. That makes me nervous because I don't want to come anywhere near this rolling bar right here because it will roll you in or roll your hair in. Not that I would know that for any reason. So, Jane right. asks, did you uh, start your fabric before putting the heat and bond light on? No, I didn't. So... Um, starting your fabric, usually when I do that, I would use like a material magic and that's because it's going to give me some stiffness. So I'd get a good crisp cut. 
when the previous scanning cut, I would always treat my fabric. With these, since they have fabric blades that are now geared towards cutting fabric, like our um, tan fabric blade or your rotary blade, then I don't now. Um, unless I'm traveling with some fabric and I know I'm going to be messing with it a lot and it might fray over time, then yeah, I'll go ahead and treat it with uh, Trio Magic. But on my day-to-day -day appliques, no, I don't. I, I do a heat and bond light and that's all I really need. You have questions? Oh, thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. Alrighty, so we've got it here. Let me switch cameras so you can see a little bit better. Alrighty, now I'm actually going to select right here. You'll see it in matte with a little bar on it. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to scan in my material to see in color what is on my mat. Now, let's say I had this piece of fabric right here. Oh, hello. <laughs> that I cut out a bunch of J's. Well, I could still keep using this. And I was scanning it in and turning them sideways and doing it and using every little bit that I could because I'm not going to waste material. Material is expensive. Let's cut costs where we can. But if I wanted to keep using this top bit, I'm going to use this to the end of its life. So say I had like a cork fabric or a nice leather or something like that or wool or felt. Well, I don't want to waste that. I'm going to use it as much as I can. So being able to scan your image in is life-saving, in my opinion. All right. So now we can see, I don't know if you can see it too well on camera, but I can see it right in person. You can see where it scanned in our material, and I can tell that white area is where my treated fabric is. So I'm going to take this and just drop it wherever I want it. Now, if I wanted to do a lot of these, then I could just edit, add a bunch of them on there, drop them all on there right now, and cut them out at once. So if I had an applique where it had tons of different pieces, well, I could put fabric, let's say a different fabric right here, a different fabric over here, over here, over here, drop all my pieces on there, and cut out my whole applique in one fell swoop. So it's really, it's up to you how you want to do that. So we're going to hit OK. I think it's a great spot. I love it right there. So I'm going to hit, please select. What do I want to do? Do I want to cut? Do I want to draw? Do I want to emboss? I want to cut. Now, if you notice, it is, oh, there it goes. It's uh, grayed out in those areas because I need to put my little holder in there. I'm going to drop it in there. And we're going to hit start. Now, Courtney, you didn't do a test cut. I know. <laughs> I usually don't. With the auto blade, I trust my auto blade, so I really don't do many test cuts. But if it makes you feel better, do a test cut. It's not going to hurt anything. It might help. But usually, I'm, I'm fine. So what she's going to do, she's coming down. She senses how deep that material is, and she only wants to cut through that. You're done? Really? Okay. So <laughs> she only wants to cut through that material she doesn't want to cut through your mat if you're doing a very thick fabric then okay maybe you get a bit of scoring but i would rather a perfect cut than anything so we have our mat here i love this part how cool is that Yay. now i ripped this off and it's okay but for my actual design i'm going to take my spatula tool there is a plastic one that comes with your machine She's great and everything. I did buy the additional kit because I weed so much, you know, weeding vinyl and stuff like that. So I bought the additional kit. So mine has a little uh, metal. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to your design. You're going to go lightly underneath that and you're going to wiggle. Why do we wiggle? Because if I tear that, it's not treated just with a heat and bond light, but it still might fray. So I'm going to come under here and gently take it off, especially if it's a new mat. It's super sticky. I don't want to just rip apart everything. So we're going to put it under, here we go. And we're just going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to get it up. And if you're impatient, then that's when I rip. But yeah, I'm impatient. There we go. There's our design. Oh, How cool is that? Gosh. That was so easy and fast. Yeah. So maybe I can take over from here. I do have some questions saved for the yeah. end after we do yeah. the whole process. Um, okay. But yeah. can. Can you hand me that real quick? Yeah, I got you. Here you go. Okay. Oh, look, I have it. Camera magic. <laughs> <laughs> no one blame me for that, okay? <laughs> I like cheesy jokes. Okay, so we're going to take a towel. This is a golf towel. It's really um, great. It's called Wasatch, and we have it in any of our seven retail store locations, so definitely um, check that out. So we're going to mark it for making it into an embroidered applique. So we'll go over to our 
screen here. Oh, and this is a hoop that I'll show you in a little bit. Preview. Um, so when I mark my towels uh, for placement, I, you know, since we have the letter, we can like literally put it on there, but I fold it to where I want the center of the design to be. And then I will take a, um, a ruler and put it on that fold line. Um, this one's the Omni Grip. It's really nice because it has grips on the bottom of it um, so it doesn't shift around. It's really nice. Um, and this is a uh, wool pressing mat that I'm using today with a, I'll show this one later, a Nifty Notions iron. Anyway, so this is a Clover chalk pen. So I'm just going to mark the X and Y by like folding it together so that I can see where the center of my design is going to be. So we have that one. And then I'm going to press these sides together, make a little crease, put my ruler in there, and then I know where the center is. So easy to mark the center of your design of your um, towel. All right. So now I, I'm not going to hoop crooked, which is great. Okay. So we are, are you trying to convince to... us or you, Barbara? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you trying to convince us or you that you're not going to hoop crooked? <laughs> I'm just trying to check all my boxes. Okay. I, so I this... just eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Maybe I'm a little bit persnickety. I need to chill out and just let the machine do all the work, huh? Okay, so this is called a flash frame and it works with the Brother 6 and 10 needle machines. Um, I love it and we're just gonna go ahead and show it today. Um, so these little magnets come off. One, two, three, four. And I'll show you the benefit of why it's good for them to come off separately a little later. So I'm going to use a stabilizer on the back. So this is the exquisite Terran wash for the back of my towel. And I'm going to put it like roughly behind my towel here. And then I'm going to lift this part of the hoop and just slide both of them in. And what I love about this hoop is that not only does it give you the lines for X and Y to match up your marked lines, you kind of have to draw the line straight, Barbara, but um, it also holds the stabilizer down, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my magnets back on. One, two, three, four. So this is called a flash frame. It's available in four by four and five by seven. So we have it all hooped and ready to go. And so we'll bring it over to the machine. All right. So we're on the Brother PR680W. And first I'm gonna load the design. So we're gonna go home, okay. All right, so you have tons of built-in designs on this machine. I absolutely love the designs. Um, oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful built-in embroidery designs. But today we're going to the second category of letters and there's an applique letter in the machine. So I'm gonna choose the J. I'm gonna size it down to a medium size. I'll click set. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to end edit. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is hit embroidery and I'm going to set my colors. So I want, I have actually, I have gold on number five. So I'm gonna use the magic wand, click five, five, five for all of my colors. And then it's easy as that, you're ready to go. So then I'm gonna put my hoop on the machine So it basically has a driver on the machine. So it 
snaps into place like so. so it's called flash frame because you can put it on in a flash, just like that. So if you have like a production going and you want multiple um, hoopings at a time, you just get one driver and multiple hoops. Um, it comes in a four by four. This is actually the five by seven. So if I wanted to be stitching on one, and uh, let's see, here's the five by seven. Can you see that? That's a decent size, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah. You can fit definitely a 360 iron in there for sure. All right, so I have my hooped. So I'm just gonna go back to the screen and I'm gonna click go. And we're gonna do our, it's going to stitch out the outline of where I need to put the cutout letter. Ooh, thank you for the zoom, Barbara. <laughs> oh, what happened? I said, thank you for zooming in. We're all like, where is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay, now so then I'm just going to take it out, and it snaps in and out so easily. Mm -hmm. And then we just go back over to our hooping station, and we'll see the tack down stitch right here. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's like yeah, an outline right. of a J. Yeah. And then good. this wonderful J that Courtney cut out with the, there's uh, backing on it, so you have to take off the backing. And then I just place it inside of that outline J. And I have to make sure that I'm flat here. Here we go. Great. And then we just press it with our iron. And I love this little Nifty Notions iron because it fits inside of the four by four hoop perfectly. Barbara, what pressing mats under there? This is the Nifty Notions wool pressing mat. We have it on our website. And actually, if they click the link in the description of this video, it will be there too. Very yeah, yeah. good quality. Put one of those by, uh, in my office. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't have one. Those are cool. Okay, so here's the magic, which is so cool, which is why I love that this frame has these magnets that are separate and not one piece. So I'm doing a towel. And I'm doing applique, so I'm like, but I want to use topper. So the topper that I'm using today is Exquisite Water Soluble Topping. We have this on our website and all of our stores. It's very good for towels. So basically what topper does is um, there's loops in a towel that when you try to embroider over it, those loops will come up through the satin stitch and just not look good at all. So this kind of holds everything down and it washes away and you can actually pull it away after. So don't be scared, I'm unhooping my applique, but I'm just doing like one little piece at a time. And since this piece is holding everything down, I could just very carefully add my water soluble topping to my towel so that we won't have any loops coming up through the satin stitch around the J. Just like that. that. So satisfying. <laughs> Fun, huh? That's okay. Fun. Let's go back to the machine. Do we have any questions yet? Uh, we have quite a few. If you wanna, if you wanna go ahead and start stitching, then we can run through a bunch if you want. Sure. Okay. I am going to put the hoop back on the machine. And again, the driver is actually connected to the machine, so it snaps in very quickly. And that's why it's called the flash frame, because it just goes in and out really, um, really fast, just like that. And then I'm just going to do the next part of my stitch. Make sure everything's going OK. And then I can come and check out the questions. I love the independent magnet. It really is great because then that way you don't feel like you're completely taking everything off or messing it up, but you can add to it, which is nice. 
Yes, that's why I love these flash frames. They're so versatile. And then we'll do our tuck down stitch. And it's basically as simple as that. <laughs> I'll have to turn my volume up so I can hear. <laughs> She's like, I'm working. <laughs> okay, Courtney, I'll bring you in while it's stitching. Yeah. Oops. Okay, we here go. we are. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, I can hear you now. All right, so Anne Brother does actually make a four by seven and a five by seven magnetic snap frame for uh, the single needle embroidery machine. So just contact your local Allbrand store and uh, let us know which machine you have and we'll tell you which model number to get. But they do have the independent magnets, which is really nice. So you can leave them all on and, you know, kind of instead of floating on the top. Yeah. So. I love magnetic hoops too. So let me show you guys. This is the. This is actually the five by seven. I love, love, love it. It's great. Um, do we have any more questions, Courtney? Yeah, we have a ton. I'm gonna do this one. I'll start from. Let's do this one. That way, most recent. That's for a single needle machine. What is your favorite magnetic hoop? Okay, I use different magnetic hoops for different things. Yeah. Um, the flash frame is very versatile, but currently it only comes in four by four and five by seven. So um, you can use this for quilting in the hoop, um, but I like the size of the dime magnetic snap hoops for doing quilting. But let me show you guys a benefit of this one that I really like. So this uh, frame has this back part here. Do you see like this lift lip here? So basically when you take off the magnets of the brother flash frame, And I'll just use my other towel. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because we're almost, it, it sounds like it's finished our- I know, it goes by so fast. I know. <laughs> so let's just say you're doing a quilt and you have a lot of excess that you don't want getting caught up in the arm of the multi-needle. You can actually roll fabric here like this. And this is, this is my practice thing, but it's just to show you like, how much fabric you can fit back here to pick up the slack in the back of a quilt. You can put a lot, there's, I even have still a lot of room left. So that's, that's one advantage. All right, let's head on over to the machine and check out this design. All right. All righty, here it is. Look how easy that was, Courtney. Tell us so everyone. Look. Turned out gorgeous. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, just show you guys how to finish everything off. So when you put your hoop, take your hoop off of the machine, you're just gonna take these magnets off. And then the clear film just like tears away so easily. And when you wash it, if there's any excess, it dissolves in water. And then you just lift up this little section, pull it, and then rip off the back. Voila, towel. Are you gonna take the price sticker off? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't well, tearing things, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was that easy. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Oh, also everybody, if you're heading on over to the OSQE show in New Orleans, we're actually doing a make it and take it in the booth that's going to have this um, uh, project with it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a really cool show. I'm excited for that one. I'll be there in the uh, brother booth answering any and all questions. Barb will be there, so you can get both of us. 
Yeah. Um, but it, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's classes and shops and actual projects that you can make at different booths. So we'll have some come hang out with us and make some fun things, make this towel. Yeah. Oh, and also, um, we're going to have the best deals on these machines. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so the scan -a cut Courtney will be there demonstrating the scan -a cut It's only $6.99. Um, so no more applique scissors and trying to cut around corners and just uh, hurting your hands. It's it's a whole new world. Uh, we also have the PR680W. It's $11,499. We'll have 60 months 0% financing at the show. Uh, so don't miss out on that. Um, and we also have a bundle at $12,900. And that comes with the cap equipment and the stand so definitely 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 if you're in the market to start doing this um, with the machines that we demonstrated today um, the show is going to be the place to buy yeah now barbara let's answer some questions guys i feel like they're they're building yeah. up over here okay and that's the nice part about a live is you actually get to ask the questions and get immediate responses yeah, so you can you can ask me my questions and I'll ask you your your questions. Do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> um, Crystal commented that her scan and cut cuts puffy foam quite well. It works. It really is. It's, really yeah, it's like smooth as butter on the sides. I mean, it, the, that's the nice part is the machine can do up to a three millimeter thickness, so it's not trying to push through. What it's going to do is it's going to go around and it's going to cut and then it's gonna lower and it's gonna cut again. So it gets a very smooth cut. It's try to, trying to force that blade and that's when you get shifting and rivets and all of that. It's just automatically smooth. I mean, what was it? The last video we did on the after hour show, we cut wood. So <laughs> that was crazy. That was, that was a little crazy. But and it's because it does that gradual cut. Yeah, if you guys haven't watched the All Brand show with Jerry Granada, we mm -hmm. actually embroider on wood with the, cool. um, the Stellar machine. So here's another scan and cut question. So mm -hmm. is the number on the side of your machine one or two? And what does that mean? So one and two on the side of your machine right here, there's a little bar. Now that you're able to cut up to a three millimeter thickness, which is the thickest that you can cut on any cutting machine. So I like to brag. Um, but the bar on the side is allowing you to move the bar internally in the machine to allow you to cut up to that three millimeter thickness. Now, if I'm just cutting something thin like cardstock or like a thin cardstock or a thin fabric, well, I don't need the bar to be up that high. So I can switch it down. So that way I can cut thin stuff, but I can switch it up when I want to cut the crazy thick stuff. So Brothers allowed you to have both options. So best of both worlds. So that's what that bar is. And the machine will tell you, it's going to scan in your material and go, whoa, hold on, switch your bar, switch it. Then you're good to go. So there's no guesswork in it. Oh, that's so smart. Oh, Carrie Cunningham's watching. And so is Rhonda Seacrest. Rhonda says that she's coming to OSQE uh, with Jonathan. I can't wait. And uh, Carrie Cunningham has an alternate solution to the backing of um, the applique. There's something called hot fix adhesive. I've heard really good things about that. And uh, yeah, we just talked about it a minute ago. So it's like a wonder under, it's like a heat and bond light. It's just another brand called hot fix. Like I said, it's, it's probably one of my favorites, especially yeah. if you have an applique that you don't have a stitch out for hot fix is really good for that. <laughs> Okay, um, I guess we'll do more scan and cut. Whatever you uh, want. Fran says, hi again, Courtney. I wanted to know when I download from the computer clip art, it doesn't always come out right. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain way to download clip, clip art? Usually when I bring clip art in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Canvas. So Canvas is the free software that Brother gives you with your machine. So you don't have to pay a subscription fee because I heard that's a thing, not with Scan and Cut. Um, <laughs> this is why I pre-record because I take the, the sassiness out, but there's no uh, subscription, there's nothing. It's, it's a free software that comes with your machine. So what you're going to do is you're going to do an image tracing. There's going to be a button on the left-hand side when you're in Canvas. And you're going to do an image tracing. You're going to bring in your clip art, and it's going to put it on a mat, you know, in your Canvas software. And then that way, if you need to fine-tune anything, you can. If you haven't watched, we've done two videos on Canvas uh, on our YouTube channel um, on After Hours where we go through how to do those. But I would bring it in there first, and you should be able to get a better 
transfer, and then you can bring it to your machine with a USB or wireless if your computer's near your machine. Sweet. Kelly Smith is watching and she says, asking for a friend. Um, I, I get to reverse heat transfer vinyl and return, um, return it to an uncut vinyl if the transfer sheet is still attached. Can you no, I, okay, so she, she, think she forgot to flip her design. So remember how with our fabric, we had to flip it because we flipped our material. So when you're doing heat transfer vinyl, let me grab some. You've got a clear part. I'm sorry. You've got this shiny spot and then you've got this like matte side. So the matte side is your vinyl. So when you cut through, you're into a half cut. And then that way you can weed out the parts you don't want, like our snowflakes right here, and then put it on whatever material you want. A protective cloth, heat it up, peel that clear part off. So say it was a name like my son Alex, I wouldn't have to move each letter. But heat it up, peel that off, and it stays. What she's saying, if you go, if you went ahead and cut out the vinyl, even if it's still on here, there's no way to make those cuts not on there anymore. So you could cut your other image and be very careful with weeding it out, but there's still going to be the slithers of cuts on there. So there's no way to make it whole, even heating it up. It's, it's not going to make it whole again. Very so, cool. Yeah. Here's a question about embroidery machines. Mm -hmm. So Designed with Love has a very popular machine. It's the Brother PE 800. It's a wireless uh, five by seven embroidery machine by Brother. And we carry it as well. Um, it's uh, just an all around great machine, um, but it has the snap on style hoops. So it's got like two little brackets on the side that snap down. So brother actually did come out with a magnetic hoop for your machine. Um, and it's a four, no, it's a five by seven, but um, definitely give us a call at 866-255-2726 and we can steer you in the right direction. There is one for your machine, for the slide on style and the bracket style. So yes, the answer is yes. All right, let's see. Um, Darcy says, do you suggest using a rotary blade for the puffy foam? Uh, I usually don't. Um, so my puffy foam, I'm going to, in my head, that's not fabric. Um, you could, but I usually just use my black auto blade for that. Um, and I usually don't use my, uh, rotary one. The thing with the rotary blade is, do I have mine on me? Let's see. I don't think I have mine on me. Um, the thing with the rotary blade is that it's going to cut, oh, here it is. Um, so this is your rotary blade. It looks like a little pizza cutter. Let's see. It looks like a little pizza cutter where normally your blade would look like this and there's a little blade on the inside of there. If I press down, you can see it. So with that rotary blade, what it's going to do is it's going to come around and it's going to try to find you the best cut possible. So if I'm doing a cotton material or doing any specialty material, which is what they made this for is specialty material. So think a silk, a chiffon, uh, leather, things like that. That's what this was made for. I do usually use it for most things. Um, I didn't use it for what we just cut out because there's a paper backing on there. So I just use my fabric blade in my head. It's treated. So I use this one. I use untreated with this one. But it, again, it's personal preference. It would do them both. This is going to do a one millimeter at a time where your other blades are going to go all the way through a three millimeter. The reason it's doing that is because it's looking for that best cut. And you might have to run it two times, three times. I've only had to run two times because it's gradually, um, you're gradually cutting down further where this will automatically do it. So this takes longer, it does a smarter cut than these do, but this will do it automatically. So I usually just use my black auto blade for that. Very, very cool. Okay, um, so our next question is from Jeanette Garcia, and I'm gonna have to ponder on this one. If you want the back to show applique too, can you do it again on the back? So um, just thinking like on the surface, um, I have the Brother Luminaire that has projection on it. And I think that would be the easiest way for placing 
but you would what I would do is definitely have instead of the polyester bobbin in the machine, uh, the the bobbin thread. Go ahead and put the same color on the back so that it looks better from behind. But it's pretty standard when you buy an embroidered towel to have one side pretty and the other side, um, you know, with the, and the stabilizer washes away. So it'll just be the outline of a J um, without the, and the white. And the stitches don't look bad on the back of it. It's just, uh, they just look like stitches. So I personally like to look at the back of it so I can see how things are made. Yeah. So I like that, but you can back it if you want. Yeah, that was a cool question. But just make it in your, um, put it in your bathroom so that it faces one direction. Um, well, there there are those, uh, the stabilizer, you, well, I can't remember the top of my head, um, that you usually use for like baby onesies that you can put a backing on it. So when it's touching their skin, it's soft. But you could cut out a square of that, put it on the back of there so it's finished off. You know, you don't see the stitches. And that you would just heat on there. So, I mean, you could do that if it's really bothering you. <laughs> Maybe, oh, just maybe, you know how on the machine it has that applique button. You mm -hmm. could do an, uh, if you were doing like an outline applique, like mm -hmm. a circle yeah, with fabric in it that has an embroidery on the inside. Uh, that but might. See, this is when me and her go on tangents. I know. <laughs> I'm going down the rabbit hole. Try this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Lucy asks, do you have a playbook three for the luminaire? Yes, Lucy, we do. Please call the stores um, and visit us and we'd be happy to get you one of those playbooks. It changed my life. <laughs> it really <laughs> did. Directly changed my life. <laughs> it's no, they're helpful though, because then it's like, it's, it's like a user guide, but it's not tedious. But I like those because I'm a visual person. So a lot of times there's pictures and then yeah. that way I can bookmark it for different projects I'm doing, different techniques I want to do. And I don't feel like I have to look through the whole thing. I can just jump to exactly the things that I'm curious about. Yeah. And so for those of you who don't know what the brother playbooks are, it's a book like this thick on the, uh, they have them on the multi-needle machines. They have them on the six needle and the 10 needle and the luminaire. Um, and it's like a full color tutorial and it gives you all of step by step what button to press to complete yeah. a finished product and it makes it click in your brain like why would i use this feature oh right. okay now i see it in application which is great all right let's see oh here's one from michelle she watches your after hours videos Thank you. Um, I recently purchased a scanning pad from a local dealer after watching several videos after hours with Courtney. They'll have my training wheels on. So, hey, everyone starts from somewhere. Whenever I first started scanning cut, we're not going to say how many years ago. Um, <laughs> whenever I started, there wasn't a lot of information out there. It was bits and pieces. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people don't know about the scanning cut because they don't know what it can do. You're literally not limited. So you can start learning. I feel like I'm still learning things about the scanning cut and how to do even more. And that's why people are like, wait, did you use the scanning cut to burn wood? Yes, I did. Did you use it to cut wood out? Yes, I did. Did you use it to etch glass? Yes, I did. There's so many things because you're not limited. So yeah. you start and then you start doing projects and completing them, getting a little bit more confidence. And I feel like I see that word a lot in our comment section. It's always, you gave me the confidence. I have the confidence now. You have the confidence because you completed something. You did it with your hands. Um, so that's why we love doing these shows to show you guys things you can do. So you get excited about doing them, you complete them, and now you can keep building on that. So you don't get limited. Oh, my machine can't do that. Oh, it can. And it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, do you have the um, the bag for the scan and cut, the luggage set? I do, but I don't have it on me. It is at home. Yeah, I, I don't. I wish I, I would have realized it and brought it. I like the luggage one because I travel around and it's actually made. There's a little cushion that actually stays under it that has little handles. So this goes up and you can just hold it all in there, put it in the bag. And it has a slot to put your um, mats in there. It's got little storage to put other little, you know, things in there. Um, 
and it's it's got a pretty big gap on the top of it so if you had a project that you were working on a lot of times i'll put it on the top of there things that i want to show people i'll put it all in there if you have the roll feeder it fits in there great so i like the luggage because it's tailor-made to fit the scan and cut and it's got so many pockets and stuff yeah i love scan and cut on the go i can't tell you how many times i've had get togethers with friends and we just bring the scan and cut it's so much fun um and it holds a lot of stuff too so does it um is the scan and cut a tight fit in the bag no um sorry if you can hear a beeping noise um no it's not it's uh like i said it's got that cushiony bottom that folds up and it'll sit in there so the going this way it's not snug but like it fits perfectly uh, but you still have like this much room at the top to put anything else you want in there. I don't okay. want a lot of room around my machine because I don't want my machine shifting in that bag and possibly getting damaged. And again, I bring it everywhere with me usually. <laughs> um, so I, I like that it has a little handles on the side of the bag too, that I can lift it up into the back of my car, lift it out. It has a little handle just like your luggage at the top that I can pull up and then wheel it around with me. Um, so it's it's not it's not cumbersome so I, I would hate to have a giant bag and have this kind of shifting around in it so i i like the size of it plus it comes in cute colors <laughs> yeah yeah so that answers kelly's question um it's not snug but it's secure yeah so you're gonna get it's gonna be like right here up to the side and then you're gonna have a little tiny bit of room but you're gonna have more room at the top that way if you do need to put additional things you can and like i said it has um, a pocket in the front. It's got built-in little uh, pockets on the actual lid of it or pockets. So a lot of times I'll put my additional um, my additional blades and different things in there and kind of keep me a little bit more organized. <laughs> Kathy asks with a flash frame, how easy would it be to hoop a cubby? Those are the um, the zipper. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's a stuffing. Yeah. So you unzip it and pull out the stuffing. It's made for an embroidery blank, and then you would just stick it in there. Um, I would think it would work perfectly um, for that. Yeah, because usually those are a little plushy. So having that snap in there is not, you're not having to push it and then push his head away and <laughs> trying to get him in there. So it's nice just to put him in there, slide him in. But I would put his head facing out of the machine, not towards the neck of the machine. Yeah. I wish it was dangle. Here's a really good question from Paula. How mm -hmm. hard is it to use the scan and cut with other brand of embroidery machines? I've been told there's a workaround, but is it that difficult? It's it's really not. Um, so I'm a brother girl, but I do use a Bernina too. So I with that one, when you buy a design, think about it. They'll give you all the different ones. Um, if your brother don't watch this part. Um, so they'll give you all the different ones. So you're going to get a PES. You're going to get, what is it? Husqvarna's brand. You're going to get a Viking. You're going to get a Bernina's. So take the, the, whatever one is for your machine. You can put that to your machine, but you could take the PES, put it in the scan and cut, cut out your applique, right. bring that applique over to your machine, use whatever your, your embroidery file is, and then stitch out your applique. I mean, the machine, they don't know that they're messing with your trolley. So it's, it's a workaround. So that's how I do it. And it works just fine. Very cool. Yeah. And also, um, yeah. So the thing that we showed today, though, is actually mm -hmm. we took a design out of the six needle machine, yeah. saved it to um, a USB stick. I gave that USB stick to Courtney. Courtney pulled up the PES file and then it made it into a cut file. Yeah. So we kind of did the reverse here. So that would be a little bit more difficult. You would have to use. So you would. So what we did was take it from a brother machine, the multi, the 16 old machine, and then brought it straight into the scan and cut, you know, as an embroidery file. And then it switched it. So what you would do is you would take your USB and put it into, well, you could do it wirelessly too, put it into your computer take that design that you have, save it to your USB in the PES format, and you can save it to whatever your embroidery format is. Put the PES in there, read that, then you could take the same USB, put it in your machine, just take the file format of whatever your, your embroidery machine is, and then stitch out. Yeah. So that's all you have to do. You so there, are, there are some advantages for having a brother machine, but it's not a required. I, 
I have a brother girl just because it's, I learned one. So if I know the scan and cut buttons, they're similar to the buttons on the embroidery machine. So they're very user friendly, and brothers user friendly in general, but they're very user friendly to cross over to each other. The brother software is very similar to brother canvas because it's brother. Um, so it's easy to learn the editing. So I've, I, that's, it's easy for me to be able to cross over like that. Plus it's really nice. <laughs> Okay, so Anne is asking, um, how much do you inflate the design in the machine? I know there's different. I just go up once. Yeah, I, I sometimes will go up twice. So what she's saying is when you have it, you want to make sure your applique is going to catch on the outside. I only go up one, maybe two if I'm feeling real risky. Um, but I'll go up one. That way I know it's going to catch because this, the machine is taking that stitch out, that original stitch out, and turning that into a cut file so that stitch out is exact on there. So that's why I do it just one to make sure that that satin stitch is going to catch and I'm not going to have any weird gaps around my app. Okay. Okay. So shameless plug. It wasn't me. Jan asked, but what is after hours? Oh, it's a bunch of shenanigans. <laughs> no. Well, okay. So Barbara had the, and I'll be honest, Barbara had the All Ranch Show, and she is fantastic. She created it during the pandemic when everyone was at home, and they, they wanted interactions, a community, and just something fun. So Barbara started doing videos from her home and doing these great videos. And I was like, man, that's really cool. And and I would love to do something that. But I I, I should be edited. <laughs> I don't know about lives. So she's awesome and does lives. My videos are pre-recorded. It's called All Brands After Hours. And we have a lot of fun with the scan and cut. I tried to do other things and they were like, where's the scan and cut video, Courtney? Um, so I actually do, I'll, I'll start doing bonus videos. I, we just did a bonus video on the six needle that came out the other day, uh, going over different questions. But after hours, mostly on Saturdays, it comes out at seven o'clock. Um, and it's me after hours doing fun projects, answering any scan and cut questions and doing a bunch of crazy projects on the machine and showing you how to do it step by step. And I answer questions in the comments and <laughs> after hours is such fun, Courtney, it's such a movie. You're very kind, Barbara Jones. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun and we have a good time and we have a great community of people um, that come and answer questions or ask questions. And I always tell people, ask the questions because there's probably someone at home that was nervous to ask that question or didn't even think of that question to ask. So it's, it's great to have that community and be able to, you know, enjoy a craft together. So that, that's what I like. That, that's what after hours is. And we call it after hours because if I say anything that our owner, John Dowd, that does not like, well, sir, it was after hours. You can't blame me on that one. Give him a towel with his initial. <laughs> Here's your towel, sir. Here's your towel. I give him grandchildren. He's welcome. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So everybody, if you haven't yet, we're about to do our giveaway for a $25 e-gift card. So, oops, that's the congratulations. A comment, <laughs> hashtag call brands to be eligible to win that. And also, um, Courtney didn't mention it, but to um, be um, notified about the after hours, you have to go to our YouTube channel, click the bell, and then also there's like a little drop down and it will ask if you want YouTube to send you notifications. Click yes. And then each weekend when her lot, um, recorded uh yeah, she'll come out i recorded <laughs> you'll be notified as well as any um all brands video so that's the best way to go there all right so let's just do like one or two more questions we've gotten so many great questions from all the new awesome folks watching um here's one from michelle mm -hmm. what does the letter f signify on your scanning cut uh fabric so they started coming out with uh, ones that were geared more towards fabric because they realized, I mean, yeah, you can cut paper, you can cut all these cool things, vinyl, but a lot of people were wanting to incorporate that with their embroidery machines, sewing machines and everything like that. Um, so they start making out fabric ones. So then that way, now every time when you get a SDX model, you're either going to get different blades, but now they start coming out with this uh, fabric blade. And then if you have the 330, I'm sorry, 325, it's going to come with your fabric blade. If you have the 330, it's going to come out with the rotary blade, which both do fabric, just a little different from each other. Um, so that's what the F is for, fabric. <laughs> okay. And um, also, 
Oh my gosh, I love it. Kim says, I bought my Scan and Cut 325 from All Brands. Kim, thank you for shopping with us. So guys, all of the machines that we showed today are available on the internet. So you don't have to be a local customer to uh, purchase them. We can ship it to you free shipping within the continental USA. Um, so thank oh, you so much, that. Kim. And then when you purchase from us, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then and you can get free education um, from the All Brands show and from All Brands After Hours. Um, so you will yes. have Amazon would never. constant <laughs> education. <laughs> free <laughs> constant education. It really is. And so everyone's this like, what? Go for it. Everyone's oh. like, why do you guys do these videos? It's because we have these machines and we enjoy them and we want to share this with people and have more people yeah. join in and have fun with these things. Yeah. And these are the machines that we personally use too. So we don't sell products that we don't personally love and endorse. Uh, we are called all brands because we sell, um, sell the best and service the rest. So we serve <laughs> all brands of sewing machines and we sell the best hand-picked, family hand-picked quality sewing machines. And these are the ones to go. Um, the Brother Six Needle PR680W uh, has Wi-Fi now. So uh, there's just so many features. You, there's a baby monitor app where it will tell you if, you know, your thread needs to be changed or this or that. Um, so well, it's nice because you can walk out the room if there's, you know, your bobbin runs out or something like that. It'll tell you so you don't come back a few minutes later and think your design's done. It's like, oh, no, you need to change your bobbin. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's do our giveaway. You ready? Let's do this. All righty. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. 112 entries. And our winner is... Roxanne! Oh my gosh! Congratulations! Congratulations! Yay! So please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, address, and I will email you a $25 uh, code that you can use on our website towards future purchases. And you guys can shop on our website anytime, <laughs> day or night. Um, we carry very good quality sewing embroidery quilting irons so many things so many things all right well thank you everyone for watching thank you courtney for being on the show Absolutely. Uh, if you haven't yet please click the subscribe button if you're watching on facebook youtube linkedin or twitter um, so that you can be notified of future videos and we'll see you next week we will have rhonda from schmetz needles so uh, you'll learn a lot about what needles to use for what fabric. And um, so we'll be doing that at Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Central. All right. Bye, guys.